Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is Codexual, aka Hacksual. Be sure to check out the other channel. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about to see who is on your network or what programs is running on your network. Now, I know that we have done a video that shows the application, which we were running Task Manager. I strongly recommend to check out that video. However, Sometimes things are hidden from task manager and this is where the command prompt comes into play. So let's just say if you got infected with a virus, um, there are ways to hide that process. So this is where command prompt comes into play again. So um, open up command prompt, make sure you run as administrator by right clicking on it. Then you're gonna type in uh, net stat. So let me, put up the font so you guys can see it. We were at 16, let's try 24. Okay, hopefully you guys were able to see. So now we type in netstat dash B. It's really important that you put in the dash B part. Then we are able to see what programs are running and what is being sent out. So um, right now I have like a Google Chrome open. I'm just gonna go ahead and close out of that. And it says that uh, SVC host is in use and it's sending data to this. And established means that there's still that ongoing connection. If it says close wait um, or something closed, then there is no longer a connection. Uh, and then there's another status uh, that pops up and I wanna talk about that. So. Let's just say that this is the virus, which is a SCV host is not a virus. It's part of the windows, but let's just say it is. Um, what you could do is manually block out this IP address. Also, it gives you another port. So followed by the port, which is HTTPS, which the port is 443 for HTTPS. Um, how do we block that out? Well, you gotta open up your firewall settings by typing in Windows Defender Firewall with Advanced Security. I know it's on my other screen, but uh, type in Windows Defender Firewall with Advanced Security. Now this is where you're able to uh, go to the inbound and outbound rules and to block it out. I have Bitdefender, but let's just say I didn't have Bitdefender. What I would do is I don't want any incoming connection from this IP address as well with outgoing. So we go to new rule, then we can block out a program, a port, or it can be a custom rule. So let's just go to custom rule. Then it'll be all programs. Then you can choose a port number um, or any uh, uh, services. Is it going to be a IPv6, TCP, UDP, so on and so forth? You can choose what protocols it is using. And you hit next. And this is where you can type in the IP address by hitting uh, these IP addresses and hit add. And same thing with down here. So then you hit next, then you give it a name. Then the name that I would give it is the IP address and same thing with the outbound. So nothing will get sent out, nothing gets sent in, nothing will get sent out. So, and some programs, and if we go back to task manager and if some programs such as the S uh, VC host, uh, we can go down towards the details and we can look where the SCV host is at, which is a whole bunch of processes running. So we're just gonna go ahead and right click on it. Then we can go open file location and right there is the program. So this is where you're gonna get a little bit um, smart as in we're gonna do a virus scan by going to virustotal.com. The reason why you should use virus total is because hackers hate it. They hate virus total. Um, they use a crypting method that's called FUD fully undetected or F or excuse me, FUD. Then there is UD, which means undetected. The difference between FUD and UD. Um, let me uh, bring up a notepad FUD. Fully undetected, fully undetected, then UD, undetected. 
I don't know if I spelled things right. I'm stupid. Detect. Detected. Well, okay. Detected. It, it, it. All right. We're going to pretend that I spelled things right. Okay. I'm not perfect. Um, the difference between the two means that this is fully undetected. Like you don't know if you're infected. Undetected means it's like a 50, 50 chance. Maybe you're firewall or your antivirus might pick it up or it might not now here's a couple other things is it fud scan time uh scan time or is it fud scan time plus runtime or ud scan time and runtime the difference between scan time and runtime is when you scan it it will mean it doesn't look like it's a virus when you scan it with your antivirus. But when you scan it with, and if it's also runtime, uh, when you run it and then also scan it, it won't think that's a virus whatsoever. So that's the scary part. So if, if it's a FUD scan time and runtime, your antivirus won't know if you've been infected. So not all antiviruses are 100%. This is why uh, network analysis or uh, reverse engineers, they grab the file and they look at the content of how it's been coded, what's being sent out. Um, this is where you want to come into play because where the virus total is, if you upload a potential virus, I'm not saying that this file is a virus, if you upload a file that is a virus, all these antiviruses will scan it. And not only just it will get scanned, every file that you do upload will be sent over manually towards these companies and they will take a look at um, the programs if it doesn't look like it's uh, you know legit. So then eventually they'll give out a signature update towards antiviruses. Then it was like, oh, hey, you know, the, S, uh, the uh, SVC host, that was actually a virus all along. So then, it's because of you, you helped out the um, security, um, the security people, and you are helping securing the world, is basically what I'm saying. So, right now, uh, again, this is not a virus, but if it was, um, some things might pop up. And if it doesn't, what I just said is things will get sent over towards these antivirus companies. They'll take a look at the code, um, reverse engineer it, and see what's up. But um, for the time being is how do you get rid of it? Well, you right click the delete and um, you want to type in, you know, netstat host again, or excuse me, netstat space uh, dash B and see if there's any active connections. Um, then what you need to do is go towards your startup, then if it shows like a weird program right here that you're not familiar of, right click and just disable it. Then what you could do is go to reg edit, uh, reg edit. And you're going to be looking for the runtime. So I'll post these down in the description where you can follow the path. Um, so uh, Google Chrome is always up and running, uh, which I don't know why. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove that. I don't want that always starting up. Uh, private internet access, I don't want that always starting up. You can just delete the reg keys and uh, call it good. Then you wanna check the run once folder, see if there's anything in there. It's okay to delete uh, the files in regedit in these, um, in these, uh, directories so it's okay to delete them and any other directory it's not okay i don't recommend it but in these ones it's okay so let's check out the other uh user or is it local machine i think it's local machine oh there's an extra slash in there okay so it's, or were we in local machine? I'm stupid. Let's go back to current user. Okay, so it's local machine and current user. Um, 
that'll both give you the path so you can go over here and look what's in the run and run once and you can just delete the contents that are in there so no programs will be running every time that you reboot up your computer um i would also go towards our uh, run new task um type in ms config then this will pop up it will say um if you go to startup, it's been moved towards your task manager. However, what you could do is click hide all Microsoft services, then just click disable all and go manually through each one that you want to have enabled on the run uh, whenever your computer boots up. So um, what program is legit and what is not. That's how you remove a virus. Also to check out what's on your network. I would check out the other video that I did that was talking about task manager. Uh, it has a little bit more information on it. I just wanted to finish off with how to see what's on your network with command prompt. All right, uh, that's it. Uh, we'll be having another video here on this channel. Not sure what it's gonna be. Um, same thing with my actual channel. Uh, again, I wanna be more active and provide more content for you guys. So. Uh, leave a comment, drop a like, um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Purchase my VPN. Uh, use my supporter creator code on Epic Games slash Fortnite. Um, donates, donate links are at the bottom. I don't know. Blah, 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 blah. Y'all take care. See you guys in the next video. Protect your privacy and identity. Unlock sensor filters. If you're trying to get to a no-no site or you just want to be anonymous, whatever your reasonings are, you can connect to the VPN tunnels within seconds by using private internet access. Links are in the description. It's so low. Like the the it, the cost is so low. If you're not able to afford for this, then you know you're just broke as just as I am because I'm trying to get affiliates ads going on. Yeah, this is a sponsored video, by the way. Um, VPN features and look at all these great features: uh, secured VPN account, encrypted Wi-Fi, peer-to-peer -peer support, and so on and so forth. And you can connect to 33 different countries, and there's a lot of servers to go around. Plus, there's a fast download. I use this for myself as well when I try to get to those no-no sites. Yeah, okay, let's go back to the continued content and thank you for the support. Links in the description. Thank you for sticking around. Please feel free to watch my other videos. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, follow my social media. If you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon or send in a donation of any amount with PayPal. It really helps out with post-production, equipment, food in my belly, and also continue making free content for you guys. Links in the description. Y'all take care and thank you once again.